All right, I'm gonna do a check here, see if everything is uh, working. Uh, let me, uh, on a second here, I've got to work on two different laptops. Let me turn this one down. I'm doing a uh, run through. I'm gonna start doing live streams on Saturday. Um, was getting ready to make a video, and I said, you know what? I'm gonna run a live stream instead and test it out, make sure everything is running smoothly, uh, make sure everything's working. I was running some tests yesterday, and doing these live streams isn't uh, as easy as, uh, as I thought it would be. Um, so anyhow, uh, give me an indication if you guys, uh, if you guys can hear me here. It looks like there's a little bit of a delay, a little bit, let's see here. Sounds and looks. What does that say? Great. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. So what I want to do uh, actually and cover today, um, there are some things that have really come up in the news. Um, primarily, I want to focus in on real world utility. Um, and so there's there's so much going on in the space uh, we we talk a lot about and I have talked on my channel other people have talk about uh, things that are happening with uh, with ripple uh, but it's what's amazing and this is what I want to cover overall there's so much happening uh, in the world today when it comes to blockchain when it comes to digital assets and I'm talking about it at the highest levels of government and the economy um, so first I'm gonna go through a number of uh, articles uh, that I that I looked up uh, today that I was reading through today uh, and let's get into it have a little bit of a, uh, a discussion uh, completely open to uh, Q&A um, if you guys have any questions it looks like I'm getting a little bit of lag on my end um, I'm not sure if you guys are seeing the lag or hearing the lag. Let me see here. Looks like there's a bit of lag. Is there lag? You're not watching it? All right, my son's over here. Let's see. You, know, you want to pop your head in? Here we go. Let's see if you can pop your head in. <laughs> Live streaming to the world. <laughs> All right. So... All right. <laughs> All right, great. Here we go. So, hey, Ed, thank you. That's awesome. What's that? No, he's gone. So, all right. So let me let me get back to this. That's my son coming through here. Um, all right. So the first thing that I wanted to go over, and and this is great. So if you guys can interact a little bit on on this. Uh, again, Ripple, things that are happening at, at, the, at the highest level, um, Ripple hiring an ex-HSBC uh, Citibank exec as general counsel. Um, so things are happening at the Ripple level, RippleNet, Ripple the company. Um, they're bringing in some super high level uh, individuals into the organization um, that are coming from larger banks. Uh, and then at the same time, there was an interesting article that came out from, uh, that was on Forbes. And this, the title of this article, sorry, I'm not sharing this. Uh, I, would, I wanted to try to share it. I couldn't get this all together. Uh, <laughs> same hairstyle, you like that? Uh, it wasn't so easy getting this one. <laughs> um, Ripple CEO sends XRP uh, soaring, boosting Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, this wasn't the exact article that I wanted to go through, but that's okay. Um, things that are going on in the Ripple space. So today what we noticed that there was definitely some uh, movement uh, in, in XRP that we didn't actually see uh, in Bitcoin. And we started to see uh, some big gains. Um, I think it ended up with like an 11% gain uh, in, uh, in the XRP. Um, but what I, I wanted to really uh, emphasize uh, with these uh, the big transitions that are happening, and this really has to do with what's going on with um, XRP and what's going uh, on with um, the duck. How <laughs> you like the duck? That was uh, from tonight. <laughs> I took a few pictures. That's the one I ended up with. I, actually, we had a swan coming to visit tonight. I actually came by the lake yesterday for the first time. I've never seen a swan on our lake ever. Not sure where he came from. Um, I got a nice picture of it, and he was actually uh, swimming around again today, uh, calling out. I'm not sure if he lost his partner, and normally swans are paired. 
and I'm not even sure where the swan came from. That's uh, the bird here, obviously, isn't a swan. Um, so, um, you know, getting into again, looking at what is happening uh, with Swift right now, and you know, I think other uh, other YouTubers have really talked about what was going on with R3 and and the fact that Swift is going to start using R3 as a platform uh, and what that really means overall to XRP. Uh, to me, it's real world utility. It means that as, as a whole, we're starting to see some significant adoption in the space. And that's why I really like to focus in on real world utility. I'm going to have to uh, open up uh, a few of these other articles. Uh, been having some computer issues today and so one of the other things that you know overall that we that we have to emphasize when it comes to real world utility it, again at the highest level so this this is uh, an article that came out a couple days ago and it really uh, should take uh, significant notice um, this article was on coindesk um, and has to do with the marshall islands so we've seen uh, national adoption of uh, of cryptocurrency in Venezuela with the Petro. Uh, we've seen uh, cryptocurrency or digital asset adoption in Malta. Um, and the latest to join uh, this craze of adopting at the national level is the Marshall Islands. So again, ro really, again, focusing in on real world utility, uh, this means actually putting digital asset to use. Uh, and so this is unique because the IMF was actually trying to talk the Marshall Islands out of uh, utilizing uh, digital assets in as an actual currency that's uh, working side by side with us dollar and the real point uh, with that country is that they want to pull away from the reliance uh, on the us dollar and put more emphasis on their independent uh, economy um, the imf had some uh, concerns uh regarding uh regarding their economy and and really again moving away from the dollar uh to me i think it signals great things for uh what's going on within this space um the company uh it's tangium uh tangium or tangum this uh, tangium i believe it is uh this was announced on monday uh, let's see here so the currency is uh going to be the republic sovereign it's sov if you guys want to look it up uh it's to me it's it's really interesting um and beyond that it's going to they're they're creating a uh a, a, a i don't know if it's a it's not really a credit card um but it's going to be you uh an actual uh currency digital asset uh I don't know. I can't think of the terminology for it. Um, the easiest way to think about it is one of those uh, digital currency credit cards, um, but they're going to be using it uh, for legal tender uh, in the country, in the Marshall Islands. Uh, let me take a look what uh, what's being said here. Um, all right. So let's just take a break here. Um, end of global payments will run through RippleNet. Oh, in the end, global payments, uh, Whitefly. Uh, R3 is just that I, I, I agree with that Whitefly. I really think as well that we're starting to see some big uh, transition uh, within the space in general. Um, I, I truly believe that. And it's interesting, too, because uh, we saw a lot of the hyperbole uh, and and, you know, some of the tension or animosity uh, between Ripple and Swift. Um, there was some discussion, what was it, a month or two ago, there was uh, some rumor in the rumor mill that uh, that uh, Swift might start using XRP. And this, to me, was really interesting uh, when they actually did announce uh, the fact that um, Swift uh, was partnering with with uh, with R3, um, and the fact that we know that uh, XRP is going to be utilized uh, or potentially utilized then at that point uh, by Swift. Um, RippleNet in general is offering a solution that has immense uh, real world utility. Uh, that you know, I believe that all the different banks out there, all the countries out there, um, SWIFT, everybody's really on notice uh, with what's happening, and and we're just we're really just seeing the tip of the iceberg, um, and that's why I wanted to, and I, I like to focus in on real world utility to really see what can happen uh, within the blockchain space 
uh, within the digital assets. Um, and so the next one here uh, that I wanted to pull up real quick, um, and this after um, we talk about the Marshall Islands. Now, this was obviously the, a little ways back, um, and this was uh, Malta. And when they actually announced, and I think, when was this? Um, back in, um, could be mistaken. I want to say, was this October time frame, maybe? Uh, when they announced that they were moving uh, fully into the, uh, into the digital asset space. Um, so I, I believe they, they adopted uh, the digital assets back in October. Um, and then in November, um, there were some additional they have the malta digital innovation authority um when malta really uh put put the entire uh, uh protocol together to really be uh the uh blockchain uh nation um and so attracting there were tons and tons of companies that actually moved into uh malta uh and they became a very uh blockchain friendly nation and it's Again, real world utility. So here we have countries that are actually doing something. Um, and here and in, in on the other side of it, we see what's happening uh, in the United States and we're struggling and fighting uh, over regulation. Although we do have some uh, support within Congress. I've talked about that. We have some support at the state level. I've talked about that. Um, but we don't have that full adoption yet. Um, as we see that's happening uh, in in other countries. Now, let me take a look here. Uh, Danger Mal, say what's up, uh, Ed Whitefly. We've got some uh, some. See any additional questions here? Uh, this is a lot harder to do than I thought. I'm glad there's uh, just a few people in the chat right now. I guess there's 29 people watching. Um, it looks like I'm getting a little bit of distortion. I'm gonna have to work on that uh, for the live streams as we as we move forward. Glad you guys are taking the time to watch, uh, kind of uh, going through this process with me uh, as we, I get more and more into the live streams and trying to balance this out, uh, you know, for myself as as we go through this. Uh, another big announcement again: real world utility, um, and this has to do with the uh, stock exchange in Stuttgart. So it's the uh, Stuttgart uh, Bourse, um, and I believe I believe that's how you pronounce it. Um, and that is actually, let's see here. Here we go. Uh, everything is really really sluggish right now. Um, here we go. So. So this is a huge boost. This is uh, uh, Germany's second largest stock exchange uh, getting into trading to the into the crypto trading platform. Now this had been announced before. Um, I believe it was maybe a, a month or two ago. I'm kind of losing track between everything that goes on. Uh, but today uh, the Borsa Stuttgart uh, is officially uh, has officially launched uh, crypto trading. And the reason why I think this is even doubly important um, is because at launch, uh, they're supporting uh, four digital assets, Bitcoin, XRP, Ethereum, and Litecoin. So um, that to me is really a big movement uh, in, in the right direction. Uh, and especially considering if we look, you know, for the XRP community, those that are really uh, concerned about the movement of XRP. And here you have uh, the second largest uh, <clears throat> stock trading platform uh, in Germany uh, picking up XRP uh, along with Bitcoin uh, as their initial digital assets. I think that, you know, that really says something. So when a stock exchange is going to adopt we have Coinbase that still hasn't gone uh, live uh, with XRP yet. Um, and here we have the second largest stock exchange going live with a, with a digital asset trading platform. And they're putting XRP right up there. And that's, it, again, it, it's a super high level, super high level uh, real world utility. Um, the next uh, thing that I picked up here, and this kind of filtered over a little bit into what I was planning on uh, talking about on Saturday, um, but this is a stable coin that is now uh, pegged by uh, Bitcoin that is on the, here we go, uh, it's actually on the Ethereum uh, blockchain. So this to me is, is interesting. Um, because it, we're, we're seeing this transition away on the uh, on the stable coins. Um, I believe that we're starting to see 
if, if you see a stable coin that's pegged to a digital asset, um, and I, I could be wrong, but so far all the stable coins have been pegged uh, to a currency and primarily to the US dollar. Uh, so I believe, and again, I could be wrong, but I think this is the first stable coin pegged to another digital asset uh, and then launching uh, as, uh, uh, as an ERC-20 token. So it's kind of uh, utilizing uh, multiple components uh, within within the block uh, within the uh, digital asset space uh, which kind of brings me again as I was mentioning kind of brings me into what I plan on talking about on Saturday which is really focusing in on what the potential and possibilities uh, can be uh, when it comes to digital assets as it as it relates to uh, fiat and relates to gold standards um, so uh, let me take a, a quick uh, look at the comments here um, from a Crusaders fan and this has to do with um, do I believe that uh, token taxonomy act will be passed quickly um, I, I, I truly uh, hope that it that it would um, after I, I had a couple conversations uh, with uh, with uh, uh, Congressman Soto's uh, legislative assistant, I've had a couple of conversations with the legis uh, legislative uh, assistant uh, staff at uh, Warren Davidson's uh, office. Um, I plan on reaching out again. I want to get some feedback and some follow up. I know they're planning on reintroducing uh, a new bill. Uh, one of the biggest obstacles, and this is really why I've been harping on it in my previous videos, uh, one of their obstacles is getting through a committee and really convincing uh, the other legislative staff teams as well as uh, the other congressmen uh, to come on board and, and truly see uh, digital assets for what they are, uh, understanding the blockchain space uh, for the for the life-changing uh, revolutionary tech technology that it is uh, but one of the things that they had pointed out and it's there there's still uh, some uh, some preconceived notions uh, you know within the staff as well as uh, the congressional representatives that digital assets still utilizing you know, and, and really could think about it more as a negative terminology uh, cryptocurrency uh, cryptocurrency is more easily uh, placed in in the same in the same space uh, with uh, with the black market, uh, and so they're still looking at it as the illicit uh, the the illicit uh, currency uh, or the currency used for illicit ill-gotten things, uh, and so that's one of the obstacles that they need to overcome is the education of the legislative uh, teams in the congressional offices as well as the other. Uh, uh, congressman and that's something that I would like to really start focusing in on and trying to chip away at obviously there's some big lobby organizations out there already formed uh, that are doing that obviously an organization like uh, ripple has tons and tons of money to, to pour into lobbying and they are reaching out to the to the uh, congressional representatives as well uh, and but when it comes to when it comes to the grassroots level and again and and i talked about this in a previous video you know the those in washington represent our interests um, and so it's really up to us as well as all these lobby efforts to reach out to our congressional representatives and let them know hey this is something uh that we see is extremely beneficial uh to us uh let's see here we take a look at these comments um, XRP still going down. Ripple is up uh, is the one selling to the institutions. I I I still really think, and and this is I've said this before, is that XRP movement. And if you look back a year ago, we had a very speculative market and and based on the FOMO, you know, people were jumping in and it became the hot topic and the news and, you know, everybody was talking about, oh my God, Bitcoin is hitting 20,000. Um, and so you, you had this, this FOMO fever of, of getting into the space, which pushed everything uh, to a very high level. Um, really brought a ton of attention to the space, obviously. But at the same time, I believe that the XRP, uh, 
the XRP will actually begin moving when we see more utility. I believe the same thing in the other spaces. So we're starting to see little by little as there's more adoption, there's more news. Um, there was, uh, you know, the trigger uh, that we saw that 10, 11 percent uh, gain in XRP, I believe, you know, had something to do with uh, with the news that there's a possibility and there's something that uh, Garlinghouse uh, had had brought up uh, that that there's still a possibility a possibility of talks with swift but we're also seeing swift partnering with r3 so there's the possibility of swift still utilizing uh, xrp and you know everybody knows the swift technology even uh, their gpi technology is just not up to par uh, when it comes to RippleNet. so will xrp move i believe it does uh, i believe it will um, but I also believe that it's tied to full utility, meaning adoption by the banks, adoption by the financial institutions uh, through X Rapid. I, be I also believe that there's other utility of XRP when it comes to coil, uh, the XRP tip bot. There's a lot of functionality that can be had uh, with XRP, but we need to see more adoption. I believe that 2019 is the year that we're going to begin seeing more and more adoption taking place. Uh, let's see. Um, Tar Heels. Um, not enough to cover all the tokenized items they may want to tokenize. Um, speculation. Uh, El yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying to read through these. Uh, not so easy here. Let's see. Uh, yeah, so yeah, to me, and it, you know, this is interesting too. I, I like that. Elmer Music. Um, that's exactly it. Ripple News doesn't translate uh, to XRP, and that's that's the exact point. You know, is that uh, although we're starting to see more and more news uh, with Ripple and RippleNet, it's not translating to XRP, and and it won't. You know, at this point, and I also think it's too early to really see uh, the big gains. You know, so looking at the uh, at the exchange every day, I, I I rarely look at the exchange now. Uh, you know, I, I put, I invest. Uh, when I first jumped in a year and a half ago, I really started getting into uh, the digital asset space in earnest. And I thought, oh, this is going to be amazing. I, I couldn't lose every every dollar I put in. It seemed like the market was constantly going up, and it was. Uh, and uh, but at that time, I said, hey, this is awesome because I can figure out how to trade in this space. And there were a lot of people even today using you know technical analysis to trade in the space and i think it's it's super uh high risk uh to trade in this space right now because it's still volatile uh it's still speculative and i think it's speculation that's impacting uh relatively you know the ups and downs of of the different uh of the different digital assets uh which isn't that unlike uh, what happens and, and I don't want to draw a comparison here so and I'm not comparing the two uh, but it's not that different than what happens let's say in the penny stock space it's a lot easier to manipulate uh, penny stocks than it is uh, to manipulate an Amazon uh, for instance so I'm not saying that's what's happening at this level um, but based on speculation that's what happens a lot in in the penny stock space uh, you get a, a, a ton of uh, uh, FOMO or, or FUD or whatever it might be, they pump people up to start buying and they start dumping. And then that's why you see those spikes a lot of times in the penny stock and you'll see it uh, prefaced with news. Oh, you know, they're looking for a report that's going to come out next week and you got to get in because the report comes out, it's going to spike by 250% or 1000%, whatever the news might be uh, when it comes to penny stocks. And so to me, this is a, a, a longer term investment. Um, I'm not looking to trade, and and I and again, I think anyone that is trading is taking a big risk. And even in the stock, uh, the stock market, if you don't know what you're doing, uh, and you do it just based on emotions, uh, which is partially involved in in speculative uh, a speculative investment, there's emotions involved there uh, because you're just looking at at what's going on in the media or or feedback from other individuals. And it's dangerous. Um, I think you're going to come out on the on the downside more often than not when you're trading, unless you really, really know what you're doing. Um, and then they average it out. Um, you know, so if you're trading, you're gonna have some gains, you're gonna have some losses. On average, you might have an expectation. I'm talking about with regular stocks. Um, but it, but again, 
a lot of uh, of us, you know, retail investors, you get on, um, you don't have the, the time to watch all the technical analysis in the stock market, let's say, um, and it, it becomes risky because now you're terrified every time it goes up, should I sell? It's going down, should I sell? Um, but there's there's more to it. Um, and, and again, it, it's extremely difficult in a, uh, in a speculative space like this. I kind of ran off on a tangent. Sorry about that, guys. Um, let's see here. Um, see a lot of comments going through here. Sorry, I can't, uh, even though there's not a lot of people here, I've got two laptops going. I'm trying to keep on top of everyone that's, uh, that's jumping in, uh, questions. So, all right, let me, uh, let me go to the, uh, to the next, uh, topic here, which I think is also interesting. And this, uh, recently came out, this was announced before. Um, but this is something else I thought was important. And, and when, we, when we look at some of the news coming out, again, going back to real world utility, I think about the, uh, the type of media or the me that, that's actually reporting uh, on this space. So there's, there's the known, uh, there's the known uh, blogs or news sites you know, for the digital asset space like uh, CCN and, uh, and, and others. Um, but here we had an article on Forbes uh, talking about NASDAQ working uh, with seven different cryptocurrency exchanges. Now, this came out the other day uh, on the news. Uh, this article specifically was from yesterday. Um, I hope this, this doesn't start playing here. They put a, a video on this on the news uh, site that I'm looking at here. Um, but what's, what's really important about this um, a, you know, again, it's being reported in, in Forbes, um, but, but when, when they're utilizing a platform and really focusing in on the NASDAQ uh, technology uh, to really uh, help prevent uh, fraud and manipulation. And so the technology, so really a sum of the technology is uh, surveillance technology that NASDAQ uses to verify to its clients that trading volume is as free from fraud and manipulation as possible. There are seven exchanges using it right now. The two top exchanges that are using NASDAQ software, uh, Gemini and SBI virtual currency. Um, the fact that Forbes is talking about it, the fact that um, NASDAQ is, is partnering and selling their software, granted they're in the business of, of selling this software, but they're also not going to allow uh, just any company to gain access to their software. And I think that that really is telling when it comes to, again, we're talking about real world utility. Um, now let me take a, a kind of a side note here and maybe you guys have some feedback on this. Uh, and that's really the point as to why I wanna bring this, this uh, next article up, which is really an interesting topic. And, and uh, the other day I talked about um, one coin, uh, one use. Uh, let me take a uh, hang on one second. Do you think the bots buying and selling is why we can't see a better price? That's one seven nine, Kevin. Uh, you know that that's a great question. I, I haven't really focused too much on on these on bot on any of the bots that are going out there and and buying and selling. I really don't think that uh, they're going to have that big of an impact. Uh, that that's really uh, my my opinion on it. I don't think that that the bots will really contribute uh, that much to the space. Um, all right, so this is interesting. Again, sorry, I wish I was uh, sharing my screen so you guys could see what was going on here. But um, this came out the other day. Let me see when it was reported on the 29th, and this is the world's largest gun uh, gun auction site, which is Gunbroker um, dot com. Um, and they are planning to add Stablecoin, Freedomcoin uh, as, a, as a digital asset in order to buy um, on the gunbroker.com website. Hang on a second. And so this is, this is really interesting. There, the article, really the theme of the article, he said he wasn't really, uh, he's, he's not against the idea. Um, it's just it, what he didn't feel that the uh, platform they were using really was needed for them to really have their own uh, uh to use a you know uh, the specific stable coin that they're 
they're planning on using um, that you know there's other digital assets out there that could be utilized uh, for this purpose but I believe you know one one use case you know one coin one use um, there that could be expanded a little bit but I really think it's interesting and and I think it's potentially good and I, I think it's potentially bad uh, that there would be a blockchain involved in in a gun purchase um, and so the idea here is when when you go and buy a gun you they're going to do a background check but you're they're not tracking and registering you at a federal level for owning the gun so now the question then is um, and the gun store is uh, responsible for keeping the records when you purchase that gun but there isn't a federal database of gun owners now if you're purchasing through the blockchain and this is the big question i want to see if you guys have any feedback on this the big question uh, that i have is really you know if you know if you're buying guns on the blockchain is this then is this going to be recorded is your purchase recorded in the blockchain and is that record then accessible uh by the federal government and is that an intrusion on your rights uh so I'm, I'm looking at both sides of it i think it's great that you can go on and buy with digital asset but i i see the issue where your purchase might be tracked and then uh available uh at that point and and it becomes a registry a gun registry at that point i don't know if you guys have any uh feedback at all Um, I think there's more comments here on uh, <clears throat> on Corda R3 um, XRP the standard. <laughs> um, yeah, yep. Yeah. So you know, and I, I've I've actually bought it auction before um, online auction, and typically when you use a website. Uh, like a gun broker or if you go to a, an auction to buy a gun then it's going to then be uh, delivered to a gun store um, you still have to go through your check you have to go through uh, your background check um, it's obviously not going to be delivered to you directly so um, all right I'm going I'm to move on from there I thought that was really interesting I thought that's an interesting topic um, I think it's interesting that they're starting to utilize a, uh, a stable coin um, on their website. And I think it's, it's going to be the first uh, to do that. Um, now, and this, now, now I want to go into um, a couple articles. And this really came uh, from uh, uh, last year, from 2017. Um, one of them is a White House advisor economic advisor uh gary Cohn joined a startup back in 2018 again we're talking about real world utility and really uh high level um you know high level uh individuals that are joining uh blockchain mick mulvaney white house staff uh big big uh, bitcoin supporter um actually was hired by donald trump in 2018 <clears throat> i'm sorry it's getting super dry in here I'm going to just step away for one second. Hang on a second. Uh, much better. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. I have a, uh, a dehumidifier running in the background, and once it starts kicking in, it gets super, super dry. So, so again, high level. Now, this, is, this was interesting, too. This goes back a little ways. And, the, you know, my purpose tonight, again, just thinking about real-world utility, um, all the possibilities uh, in real world utility. Now, this goes back to Warren Davidson. This was December of last year. Um, he actually uh, presented. Um, he actually. Oh, this is funny. Okay. Um, there we go. Hang on a second. Here we go. I'm just looking back at the uh, comments. There we go. All right. So. Um, this was uh, December 13th, 2018, and this was Warren Davidson, and this had to do with uh, building the wall, and this was in an interview. Um, I just think it was, a, you know, again, interesting, interesting use case, um, but he brought this up, and raising money to build the wall on the border, um, and he called it the uh, buy a brick, build a wall, and he called it, um, that, what did he call it? He, I think he called it the wall coin. 
or something like that. And that, that was about a year ago. They have to actually drafted, um, introduced a bill uh, in order to uh, in order to do this. Um, that was about a year ago. I thought that was interesting. Um, and then we have uh, this was um, in 2017. These are articles that that I, I kind of missed, but you know when they first came out. And this was 2017. Let me pull this article up really quick. And this was actually Trump signing uh, a defense bill authorizing the study of blockchain. And this was back in 2017. Uh, and so obviously there was a lot going on in the space, but it wasn't as developed as it is today. We have, uh, so this was, let's see, December 13th, 2017. Uh, U.S. President Donald Trump has signed a $700 billion military spending bill that includes a mandate for a blockchain cybersecurity research study. So if that isn't all telling uh, that, as of uh, two years ago, uh, we have Donald Trump signing in the in the defense bill um, research money that's going towards blockchain research for cybersecurity. I think if it, it doesn't get any higher than that, you know, when it when it comes to real world utility, obviously we we don't know if they put anything into place uh, from that, um, but but that but that's pretty significant, you know. So again, that really validates. The technology it validates the use case um, and again at the at the very very highest levels sorry now the the dryness in here I'm losing my, my losing my voice um, all right let's see what else we got here um, you guys got a lot of comments here Ed uh, Ed Valley what will be your future schedule for this um, normally, I've been uh, just recording videos. Um, I started the, uh, the the live stream last week. I'm going to be doing another live stream on Saturday. My plan is to do Saturday mornings at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I know that's probably too early uh, for everybody on the West Coast, so I may adjust that. That just seems to be a good time that fits into my schedule. Um, I might try to do it evenings here. So right now, live stream that I'm locking in is going to be on uh, Saturdays, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and then as I go through, I'm planning it out uh, for, for next week as well. Um, let's see here. Uh, Tar Heels, Amazon, Microsoft, IBM will be uh, play money. <laughs> I agree with that. I mean, it's amazing, you know, what's happening uh, right now in the space. And there's really... A tremendous amount of potential. Um, I, you know, I think that's phenomenal advice. Um, have patience, buy and hold. That's that's really what it's all about. I think back, and I I made a video on this um, a, a little a little time ago, um, and and this, it really had to do with where Microsoft was uh, in the '80s when it first launched, and, I, and it was down. I think it was like. 10 cents or something like that. Um, Microsoft now is, is, is over $100. Um, obviously, it, it's had its ups and downs, but <clears throat> if you think about the buy and, buy and hold, um, everybody's so focused in on how much money can I gain uh, over the next week or so, over the next month or so, um, really, it's, it's, a, it's a longer term strategy. Same thing with Amazon. I mean, the people that made their big hits with Amazon, people that made their big hits with, with Google, uh, big hits with Netflix, big hits with any of the big companies were early adopters and they bought in at the early stages. And they were also able to put the money in. And I say this on every video, you know, invest what you can afford but also invest what you can afford to lose. So any of the money that you put in uh, to an investment uh, like this is money that you have to just forget about. If you try to dictate uh, the ups and downs of the market, um, it can be very detrimental. Um, and not, not it's gonna be detrimental to your health, but it's gonna be detrimental uh, to the finances that you're investing. So you're, you're going to lose uh, more time than you're going to win when you start following the, the trend like that and you try to predict the highs or predict the lows. And I've seen some YouTube videos, you know, talking about, oh, you know, I'm going to wait for it to drop to a certain point. Well, you never know if it's going to drop. You know, maybe it won't ever drop to that point. You know, so you really, if you're willing to invest, uh, then invest if you have the money you're not worried about and and you can be that long-term investment money 
that's really how you have to look at it. We know that the market can hit certain target points. You know, we know that in at least in past, based on speculation, uh, we saw that XRP, you know, hit over three dollars. We saw Bitcoin hit over twenty thousand dollars, and that was without any utility. So now that we're seeing utility in the marketplace uh, for <clears throat> digital assets, for XRP, for uh, other digital assets in general. Now we see another stable coin pegged to a Bitcoin on the Ethereum network. Yeah, there's so much at play right now. We have, sorry about that. Hang on one second. We have countries that are adopting digital assets as their national currency, uh, bringing in blockchain to be blockchain friendly countries. We're just seeing the very tip. So someone before mentioned, you know, dipping their uh, toe in the water. Uh, that's that's exactly what's going on right now. So have patience. Um, do you think uh, Bank of America <clears throat> will come out this year? <laughs> I, I think there's other things at play right now uh, with other banks uh, in the U.S. And I, I'm I'm convinced, you know, that and others have talked about this. It's written about uh, that the uh, Ripple team, they really parade around. I mean, they know they've got they've got something that is super super valuable. They know something. They know they have something that's truly uh, uh, changing uh, for the for the economy and and really financial transaction when it comes to global payments. It, the banks also know it. So we've seen some some top banks that are working with RippleNet. We see what SBI has said about RippleNet um, as an X current. We've seen the test and the response uh, back on what X Rapids capabilities are. And I also believe that uh, many of the banks uh, have been waiting to see what the government regulation would be um, on on this space. And if the SEC and and the government keep dragging ass on this. And they and they and they don't come up with a solid plan. I, I believe everything's going to pass them by, and and these banks are going to say, you know what, we're going to do it. You know, we got it. We got to go live with this. It's, it becomes a money game at that point, especially when we see other countries around the world uh, that are becoming more and more uh, friendly and and passing specific regulation um, at at the at the federal level but we're seeing some changes at the state level as i talked about uh before that they're passing regulation because they want the jobs and so i believe that if the states are doing it if the fed is talking about it, even though they're not they're not moving if other countries are doing it that means the banks are are definitely you know uh noticing what ripple is doing uh, they they've noticed what other banks around the world have done uh, with RippleNet, with X Current, and with X Rapids. So, I, it, it wasn't a straight answer to your question. It was a little bit roundabout. Uh, but um, <clears throat> let's see here. Um, set price. Uh, money is everywhere when XRP. Let's see. Do you think Stellar is a threat? You know what? This is interesting. I, I put this into, and I'm not sure if I brought it up on my other video. Um, but I look at at Stellar as a complementary uh, digital asset and complementary solution uh, to Ripple, uh, RippleNet, and XRP. I, I see that the two of them together are really targeting uh, two different uh, uh, segments uh, in the financial space. So when you look at Stellar as a nonprofit.org. Their mission statement is to help the underserved. That's that's their goal. Their primary mission, uh, again, on their website, is to reach out to and help those uh, in in the the poorest segments of the world uh, move their money. Um, so someone's got to do that. Um, now, when we look at RippleNet, RippleNet and XRP obviously has the capability of going to the smallest uh, denominator. It has the definitely has the capability of uh, of of micro payments. Uh, we know that. But what's the focus right now? The main focus of RippleNet is really to achieve uh, global payment transactions through the largest institutions through. Uh, through the banks, through the government, uh, and, and through financial institutions. That, that's, 
the major the the goal of RippleNet. We want to see millions upon millions of dollars moving rapidly and moving cheaply. And again, on the other side, XLM through Stellar is focused on all of those poor workers out there that might be working out of country um, that are earning uh, small, small amounts, and they might be sending $50 back, $100 back, $200 back. That's their focus. Um, and so the way I look at it and the reason why they're complementary is because if a bank is then going to be involved in these transactions and they want to attempt to bank the unbanked in many of these impoverished areas um, or they want to help bank those uh, foreign workers in a Western country, um, you want to bank and make sure that they're able to bank through and utilizing uh, the Stellar solution, the bank can then achieve uh, every aspect because now they have a solution uh, to start working with these individuals. Um, I hope that, hope that hopefully that uh, kind of helps. Uh, good advisors recommend both uh, Stellar and XRP together. Oh, that's, I'm glad you said that. Yep. <laughs> Let's see here. Stellar is going after businesses, Ripple after banks. That's a good point. Yep. Yeah, bought and holding uh, some Stellar. I like XLM. I think it's it's pretty good. Um, you know, again, I I got in. I haven't uh, bought additional XLM since the beginning when I, I got in, um, but I did get a decent uh, amount at that point. Um, I saw it go up real nicely, and now it looks like it's back. I looked today. I think it was what eight cents. Um, so it's definitely uh, definitely backtracked a little bit. XRP, I believe, is sitting right around like twenty nine thirty cents. Um, so. Um, Let's see, um, I'm gonna wrap it up here in a minute. I don't wanna go too long. I think I've been going about 45 minutes. Um, Elmer Music, do you think the SEC will make Ripper, Ripple <laughs> sell their XRP? I don't, I don't know if they, well, I guess they potentially could. I don't know if they could. I don't know if that's, that's even a possibility um, that they could really force them into selling something. Um, but I... I yeah, I, I just I just don't think that they would do that. I think the SEC is more concerned, again, on regulating what uh, XRP is, whether it's a security or not. I don't know that they would really force them to sell it. I think if the SEC uh, decides on the negative side and decides that uh, XRP is a security, I think that'll have more of an impact. Uh, but I, I also believe that uh, they're not. You know, I, I think the SEC, when once they finally get their act together, um, they'll look at XRP and, and, and see that it isn't a security. It doesn't, it doesn't meet, uh, and I had a video on that, the Howey test. It, it doesn't meet the Howey test. Um, so um, let's see. Is there any other crypto to catch your attention? Uh, that's a, you know, it's interesting. You know, I, I look at, there, I think there's other uh, good companies out there. You know, I look for real world utility, um, and I, I really... You know, there's so much going on uh, in the space. I, I like the ones, I like uh, the digital assets and the companies in the top space. Um, you know, that those are the ones that I've, I've really been, you know, th those are the ones I've been focusing in on. Like, obviously, Bitcoin, um, XRP, XLM. Um, in, in the early days, I got into some other projects uh, that are still out there. And one of them is uh, is Kik. I think, what is it? Kin, K-I-N. Um I think that's their, uh, uh, and, and right now they're, they're going through um, some discussion here. Um, so we'll see what happens with them and the SEC. Uh, and so I, there, there's definitely a big case uh, to be had with them, and that could really set a trend in, in the marketplace. But there's so much great technology out there, um, and, and that's what really is, is really inspiring to me is the, is the blockchain technology and, and the possibilities you know, I think they're in, I forget what day this was, but they talked about XRP in the gaming, in the gaming industry. Um, and I think it was a Fortnite. There was, I don't know if it was a rumor, if it was real, if it's really going to happen. Was it Monero or one of the others uh, that's going to be the first digital asset on Fortnite um, or first digital asset uh, that's, that's, uh, that's available for, for uh, making purchases uh, online on the video. But you know, I think there's there's so many industries out there. There's so much potential. Um, now it's a matter of whether or not um, they're able to really um, ad really capture the potential. 
you know, so we have, you know, we, we see the inherent issues with Bitcoin. And this is what I wanted to focus in on Saturday. So I re won't really get into it today. Um, but like, you know, but Bitcoin really, I think we've already identified it's it's not really functional as a day to day uh, spending coin. Uh, it has other great attributes, but that's not its attribute. Um, XRP could potentially be a great everyday spending coin. Um, but that's not its purpose. Its purpose is for banking. Um, so that, that really leaves uh, some other wide open spaces, I think, that are being conquered right now. Um, and, and it will adapt. I think healthcare is, is a huge, huge, huge space uh, that needs to be, uh, that needs a solution uh, for, uh, for many different reasons, not just from a a cost perspective, you know how we pay for healthcare, um, how we maintain um, our 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 healthcare data. Um, if you think about our health records right now, our health records don't belong to us; uh, they belong to the hospital or the doctor. I know I'm getting sidetracked here a little bit on this, but um, but I, I think there's just there's so much potential out there right now um, in in this space. So. Um, I, I'm planning on wrapping it up here. I didn't want to go beyond 45 minutes. Um, I'll take, I'll look and see if there's one more question over here. Um, really, really appreciate you guys coming on um, and kind of <laughs> going through this process with me. It's my second live stream. It's it's crazy because the first live stream, I, I'm okay making the videos. I'm okay uh, speaking in public. I can get in front of large groups without an issue, but for some reason... <laughs> I kept really holding off on the live stream. I kept saying, I, I can't do it. You know, the live streams uh, was a little bit uh, daunting for me. So I'm pulling it together. This is the second one. I'm not sure if uh, the lag, if you guys are seeing the lag or if it's just coming through on my second laptop here, but I truly appreciate you guys uh, coming on tonight, participating, commenting. Um, definitely, if you get a chance, hit the like button. Appreciate that. Um, on Saturday, this Saturday, um, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to do another live stream. Might be way too early for everybody. Um, was going to plan on doing it earlier, but that would be way too early. So, uh, hey, Chuck, hey, good to see you on. Glad you made it. Um, appreciate everybody. And if you can get on uh, early Saturday morning, that's when I'll see you guys. I've got a couple other videos planned that I'll, I'll start posting. Uh, until then.